Hi, I'm Ray Salisbury, a photography tutor from Nelson, New Zealand. You are about to learn 10 things that will help you fast track your landscape photography. But first, here's a condensed version of the coming video. First, you'll need a full frame camera, or, and uh, when it gets long in the tooth, you'll have to upgrade it. Of course, it comes with some sort of kit lens, but you need a telephoto to compress perspective. For landscapes, you will need a wide angle, not to mention the nifty 50 for people. If you're shooting in the dark, you'll need some sort of torch, you'll need a tripod. Of course, tripods come with you know, a ball head, and uh, if you're doing a video, of course, you'll need some sort of audio recorder. And before you know it, you're broke. Now this is stark ravingly obvious, but to do landscape photography, you really do need a camera. Uh. Oh wow. Well, like most things, you get what you pay for. Now, the number of megapixels isn't really as important as the quality and size of the image sensor inside your camera. And probably the most useful feature for landscape photographers is live view. And if you switch that on, you can see exactly what your final photo will look like on the back of your LCD display. If you cannot afford even an entry level DSLR, you're going to have to settle for some sort of compact camera, like this point and shoot. But it probably doesn't have the features you need to improve your landscape photography. It's got distracting bells and whistles like um, face detection or <laughs> Wi-Fi printing, but who needs that on location? Damn. Oh well. It was just a Nikon. For most landscape scenes, you'll want to create as wide of depth of field as possible in your images. So go for a really wide angle lens, like 10 to 20 mil in focal length. Um, that's on a crop sensor, but on a full frame DSLR, you really want to get a 17 to 40 millimeter focal length lens. I got the EF 17 to 40, L series with uh, ultrasonic motor and it's got superior glass for optimum image quality. When you're starting out, any tripod is better than no tripod at all, but some of them are quite cheap and tend to be a bit wobbly, flimsy, um, and break. <laughs> that was from Crapman, do. Um, when I started out, I bought this slick tripod for 150 New Zealand dollars. It serves me well. It's great, just with a few minor repairs, it's still going strong. Unfortunately, it doesn't bear the full weight of a full frame DSLR. So I've ended up with the ubiquitous Manfrotto 190X Pro B. It's got a small ball head, so it's easier to pack away. But whatever tripod you get, just don't get one with these um, twisting leg sections, because uh, on a beach, the sand gets inside and it jams. Hey, flip. Another really useful bit of kit is the humble bean bag. My wife sewed this from nylon and filled it with rice. It's really useful on a sandy beach to protect your camera from getting dirty and for getting that low angle shot. She also created a camera cover from nylon. It uses Velcro to secure the cover around the lens. It's really great when shooting long exposures at night. It protects my DSLR from falling due. My new Canon 5D Mark III has a useful feature. It's got an inbuilt level for keeping the horizon straight. Really useful in the dark when you can't see the horizon or when you're shooting video. But if your camera doesn't have that cool feature, why not buy a bubble level and slide it onto the hot shoe of the camera? It should fit snugly. And you can level it up like that. Brilliant. You need something to carry all this expensive equipment around and protect it from getting damaged. On the beach, when the wind is blowing the sand around, this is vital. I purchased one of Lowepro's excellent backpacks, the Rover AW2. It's an all-weather series, it features dual pockets, so you can get a thermos in one side and a drink bottle in the other. The tripod on the back, it's got an excellent carrier. I've carried this for eight hours in a row with no problems. And with all weather series, it comes with a rain cover. Brilliant.
The best time for landscape photography is the golden hour, but this means you'll either be traveling to your location in the dark or returning home in the dark. So, to keep your hands free while operating your camera, buy a decent head torch. They have decent LED bulbs which seem to last forever. This black diamond model is virtually bulletproof. Um, the only thing is, they do run through the batteries. When you get bat flatteries, you'll need some spares. You'll also need a second light source so you can change the batteries. With this genre of photography, thorough planning is the secret source of success. If you're heading to a new destination that you haven't been there before, study a road map or a topographic map. Go online on the desktop version or the mobile app of the photographer's ephemeris. That's really useful for finding when the sun or moon is going to set or rise at the exact location you need. Don't be afraid to shoot during inclement weather, but do check the forecast before leaving home. A decent raincoat might be needed, which brings me to the next point. Running guru Arthur Lydiard once famously said, there's no such thing as bad weather, only inappropriate clothing. So if you're heading out for a daytime photo shoot, there's some regular gear that will keep you comfortable, such as a sun hat and sun cream. But if you're heading out into a remote location at night, you've got to be prepared for the cold. Thermals, polar fleece jacket, mittens, fingerless gloves, over gloves, a decent beanie, and even a balaclava will keep you warm. Last but not least are filters. The most expensive and the most useful is a circular polarizer filter. Now this serves to darken the sky to a deeper blue, reduce reflections in glass and water, and also using a polarizer will saturate the colors of the landscape. Brilliant, it's worth its weight in gold. You screw the circular polarizer to the front of the lens. It serves to protect the lens from dirt, or in my case, a nasty accident. The second type of filter is the neutral density filter. The main three manufacturers of these filters are Koken, Lee and Format from where I purchased this 85mm 3-pack. Now these filters are made out of resin, they're basically square, they fit into a filter holder which fits onto the front of the lens using an adapter ring. The purpose of these filters is to block the amount of light coming into the camera, effectively lengthening the exposure time. So you get a longer shutter speed, say a, a whole second or 10 seconds, maybe minutes. Um, that's great for blurring star trails, photographing waterfalls in bright conditions, or flattening the ocean into a nice flat mill pond. There's a third type of filter which is very useful for landscapers. It's called the ND Grad, or Neutral Density Graduated Filter. You can buy them in soft graduation from dark to light or hard graduation, which is less forgiving and must be aligned very carefully um, in the filter holder. Now, now I purchased the soft grad set of three because they're more forgiving and useful for situations where the horizon is not flat. Using ND grads will save you time fluffing around in Photoshop and allow you to get the image right in camera. It also means you can enter some of those competitions where image manipulation on the computer is banned. Well, I hope this video has inspired you to become more intentional with your photography. Getting good gear is all part of the process of improving your image making. Don't forget to download your free ebook. It's at the end of this video. And if you want to learn more, why not subscribe to this channel? For more helpful tips, download your free ebook. Click to the right of the screen. And thank you for subscribing to my channel. I appreciate it. It's time to get out of here. Thank <laughs> you.